China just found something buried deep under Mars, and it changes everything. In a forgotten region once seen as barren, a hidden coastline emerged. Massive floods may have lasted billions of years. But terrifyingly, it matches where NASA may have accidentally destroyed alien life. Mars exploration has been a daring and challenging pursuit for over half a century. The first attempts came from the Soviet Union in the 1960s with missions like Mars 1 and Mars 2, which faced setbacks but laid the groundwork. Their breakthrough came in 1971, when Mars 3 became the first spacecraft to land on Mars, albeit briefly losing contact seconds after touchdown. Meanwhile, NASA began its Mars ventures with the Mariner program, achieving the first successful flybys and orbiters in the 1960s and early 1970s. The pinnacle came with the Viking missions in 1976, where two landers sent back the first detailed surface data and conducted groundbreaking experiments searching for life. The march continued through the decades, with rovers like Spirit and Opportunity in the early 2000s, dramatically transforming our understanding of Mars's watery past. These explorers uncovered evidence that Mars once had environments potentially suitable for life. However, not all missions succeeded. The UK's Beagle 2 in 2004 failed to fully deploy after landing, space agencies worldwide have learned from each mission, honing technologies that culminated in recent successful landers and rovers, including NASA's Perseverance and China's Zhurong. This history underscores just how difficult it is to reach and study the Red Planet. Each mission builds on the successes and failures of its predecessors, bringing us closer to answering the ultimate question. Is there life on Mars? China's bold leap into Mars exploration was marked by the launch of Tianwen-1 in 2020 a mission that combined orbiting, landing, and roaming the Red Planet in a single, groundbreaking effort. This ambitious approach set China apart as a newcomer, challenging the historical dominance of NASA and Roscosmos in interplanetary exploration. The rover at the heart of this mission was Zhurong, named after a fabled sea god symbolizing power and discovery. About the size of NASA's Spirit and Opportunity rovers, Zhurong was built to endure Mars' extreme conditions and equipped with advanced instruments to unravel the planet's secrets. Its landing spot, Utopia Planitia, the largest recognized basin on Mars, which scientists suspect was once an ocean bed teeming with ancient water. The touchdown was a feat of engineering finesse, Jurong descended using a multi-stage system involving an initial heat shield, a supersonic parachute, and precision retro rockets, culminating with landing legs designed to absorb the shock. A technology surprisingly similar to that used in NASA's Viking landers from the 1970s, but updated with modern innovation. This ensured a stable landing on a landscape filled with hidden geological history. Shortly after landing, Jurong began deploying its critical instruments, including a soil-penetrating radar designed to peer beneath the surface. This radar uncovered around 76 distinct layers of hydrated minerals, evidence that liquid water once flowed beneath, leaving sediment and chemical footprints across millions of years. Some of these layers tilted at angles indicative of ancient shorelines, Confirming the long-held suspicion that this region hosted an ocean, Jurong's mission was not just about scientific discovery, but also a statement of China's rising space ambitions. It marked the first time China landed and operated a rover on Mars, joining an exclusive group of nations capable of such complex interplanetary missions. Unlike single-purpose missions of the past, Tianwen-1 and Jurong aimed to provide a comprehensive survey from orbit to surface analysis, complementing NASA's concurrent exploration in Jezero Crater with the Perseverance rover. As data flowed back, 
Jurong's findings began to reshape scientific understanding, revealing a Mars far more dynamic and watery than previously thought. But these discoveries also raised unsettling questions about past Mars missions. Could earlier experiments, especially those searching for life, have inadvertently destroyed the fragile bio-signs they sought? The story of Jurong is as much about uncovering Mars's past as it is about challenging humanity's understanding of life beyond Earth. The story of Mars exploration is as much about unanswered questions as it is about groundbreaking discoveries. One of the most perplexing mysteries dates back to the 1970s, when NASA's Viking missions became the first to land on Mars with the explicit goal of detecting life Viking 2 in particular, conducted a series of biological experiments on Martian soil samples. In the first test, scientists observed an unexpected production of carbon dioxide shortly after adding nutrients to the soil, a signal that many thought could indicate microbial life. This discovery sent shockwaves through the scientific community, hinting at something profound. Life, or at least some form of biological activity, might have existed beneath the barren surface. However, subsequent tests complicated the picture. When scientists added more nutrients, the reaction diminished or changed in puzzling ways, leading many to conclude the initial results were false positives caused by non-biological chemical reactions. The harsh Martian environment, with its intense radiation and oxidizing soil, seemed too hostile for life as we know it. But new interpretations now challenge that view. Some scientists propose that the Viking landers might have unwittingly destroyed fragile microbial communities by overwhelming them with nutrients or toxic chemicals in the experiments themselves. The idea is chilling. We may have killed alien life before we even fully understood it. This theory opens a Pandora's box of questions. What if Mars once harbored living microbes that survived in protected niches, only to be extinguished by our technological curiosity? Could the very tests designed to confirm life instead have doomed it? Jurong's recent discoveries of hydrated minerals and signs of relatively recent water activity add weight to these questions. They suggest a dynamic Martian environment that might have supported life longer than previously thought making the Viking experiment's ambiguous results even more haunting. As we uncover new evidence, the line between scientific inquiry and cosmic tragedy blurs, urging caution and deeper reflection in our quest to explore. Mars? What else could we have missed? Or worse, destroyed? While China's Jurong rover was uncovering secrets in Utopia Planitia, NASA's Perseverance rover was simultaneously making headlines on the opposite side of Mars. In Jezero Crater, Perseverance recently found what scientists are calling the strongest evidence yet of ancient microbial life. Igniting a new chapter in Mars, exploration drama Jurong's radar penetrated up to 35 meters below the surface of Utopia Planitia revealing an astonishing 76 distinct layers of hydrated minerals, rocks containing water molecules trapped within their structure, often a key biosignature on Earth. These layers were tilted at angles consistent with ancient shorelines, directly supporting the idea of a vast, long-lasting ocean that shaped Mars billions of years ago. But what makes this discovery chilling to NASA experts is the indication of relatively recent water activity, perhaps as recent as 400,000 years ago, implied by salty crusts on dune surfaces. This runs counter to previous beliefs that Mars became completely arid millions of years ago. Such recent hydration raises the tantalizing prospect that life could have persisted far longer than imagined. Meanwhile, Perseverance in Jezero Crater collected rock samples exhibiting leopard spot mineral formations, unusual and complex structures associated on Earth with microbial metabolic activity. 
Published studies show these potential biosignatures involve iron sulfide and phosphate minerals, organized in ways that suggest biological influence, but fall short of definitive proof. Together, the findings from Jurong and Perseverance give a dramatically richer picture. Ancient oceans once covered vast Martian regions, and microbial life might have thrived in these watery environments. The debate is now fiery. Were some of the life forms crushed unseen by the first landers? Or does evidence of their existence lie hidden in these mineral layers waiting to be fully decoded? These findings not only challenge past assumptions, they open new frontiers for exploration and new mysteries for science to unravel. While Jurong explored Utopia Planitia, analyzing ancient ocean remnants, it also made a startling find on the Martian surface. Dunes covered by a salty crust. This crust is far from a static feature. It suggests recent activity involving liquid water as recent as 400,000 years ago, a blink of an eye in planetary terms. How is this possible? Scientists propose that snow from the polar caps melts during warm periods, creating thin films of liquid water. This water then evaporates, leaving behind the hard salts detected by Jurong's instruments. This discovery challenges long-held assumptions that Mars has been completely dry and inactive for millions of years. It reveals that Mars might still be breathing, experiencing cycles of water activity that could intermittently create habitable conditions. These salty crusts are essential clues. On Earth, saline environments often harbor microbial life adapted to extreme conditions, raising the exciting prospect that similar microbial ecosystems could have persisted on Mars until very recently, or might even survive today in pockets shielded from harsh surface conditions. Jurong's discovery not only enriches our understanding of Martian hydrology, but deepens the mystery of life's potential survival, raising powerful questions. Could we have missed life existing just below the surface? What Jurong discovered in Utopia Planitia goes far beyond ancient oceans. It hints at Mars experiencing long and complex climate cycles, not unlike Earth's own Milankovitch cycles. These cycles on Earth are caused by changes in the planet's orbit and tilt, affecting global climate patterns over tens of thousands of years. On Mars, these orbital variations appear to create swings in polar ice, which periodically produce a snowfall that melts and refreezes in dramatic cycles. This reactivation happens roughly every few million years, temporarily reviving the planet's water cycle. Jurong's data shows layers of sediment and mineral deposits consistent with these cyclical environmental changes. Clues that Mars is not a dead, static world, but one that breathes slowly through deep time. These long-term climate cycles could explain the salty crusts and relatively recent water activity Jurong detected. If Mars is periodically reactivated like this, it reshapes how scientists view its habitability. Extended wet periods might have provided refuges for microbial life, offering windows of opportunity for survival amidst harsh desertification phases. This chapter of Mars story invites us to imagine a living planet with seasons and cycles, raising powerful questions about what else might be uncovered as exploration continues. The discoveries from Jurong and Utopia Planitia and NASA's Perseverance rover bring us to a thrilling yet haunting question. Could microscopic alien life still survive on Mars today? Mars has shown signs of liquid water activity much more recently than anyone expected, potentially as recent as 400,000 years ago. Salt crusts and hydrated minerals found by Jurong suggest environments that, on Earth, would often harbor extremophiles microorganisms capable of surviving in harsh conditions by drying out and then rehydrating when water returns. This means tiny, resilient life forms could have persisted for millions of years by entering dormant states, 
waiting for the rare, brief, wet periods Mars experiences during its long climate cycles. But here lies a chilling thought. Have earlier missions, including Vikings experiments, unknowingly destroyed these fragile life forms? The idea sparks immense debate in scientific circles. Did we find life and kill it before understanding it? Or are these minerals silent witnesses to a vanished biology? This open question leaves viewers with the ultimate mystery of Mars and sets the stage for humanity's next missions. Missions that may finally confirm whether the red planet is truly lifeless or hiding tiny survivors beneath its dusty surface. Jurong exceeded expectations by operating on Mars for 358 days, far beyond its planned 90-day mission. It powered down in 2022 during a severe dust storm, closing one chapter in China's deep space exploration, but opening many more. Looking ahead, China's ambitions are bold and clear. The next major step is the Tianwen-3 mission, set for launch around 2028. This mission aims to return samples of Martian soil and rock to Earth by approximately 2031 an unprecedented feat that could revolutionize planetary science and potentially confirm signs of past or present life. China's roadmap for Mars exploration doesn't stop there. Statements from top scientists and officials indicate plans for advanced robotic missions, as well as ambitious crewed missions orbiting Mars by 2040 and potentially landing astronauts on the surface by 2050. This long-term vision includes establishing a research station on Mars, reflecting China's desire to secure a leadership role in space exploration over the coming decades. The discoveries made by the Jurong rover, combined with future sample return missions, promise to challenge existing scientific theories and may finally answer the ultimate question. Is Mars a dead planet? Or could life continue to exist beneath its surface? And maybe, just maybe, next time humanity visits Mars, we won't repeat the mistakes of the past. But then again, the red planet is full of mysteries yet to be uncovered. What we've seen today might just be the tip of the iceberg. But the next chapter in Mars exploration is already on its way. Trust us, you won't want to miss what comes next.